guys and yeah welcome to the video been here today i'm going to show you how i do the box art for my games and apps and things like that now this is what i do because i'm you know limited on time and i find that this method is very easy however this is not the definitive way on how to do this this is just how i do it and just to give you some ideas i will be walking you step by step on how i do it uh, using the paint.net software but I'm not going to give you a full tutorial on paint.net that's something you're going to have to figure out on your own since this is you know images that we're working with of course this is subject to interpretation it's subject to taste and preference you can use whatever app software you want um, really you're just limited to your imagination your time your common sense your resources like your hardware your software and all that other stuff there is really no right or wrong way to do this as long as you get the image size right and you named it right you know you have free reign on doing whatever it is you want to do and how you like all right and before we get started let's go ahead and just cover some housekeeping stuff real quick um, the people who are fully jailbroken uh, will get the most benefit from this because when you're done with your file you can literally FTP it in in the blink of an eye. Uh, even if you have a full jailbroken system, but you don't use FTP for whatever reason, you can put this anywhere on your USB device and then using whatever file manager you want in your PS3, like Multiman or Mana Guns or whatever, you can just put it wherever it needs to go. Those of you who are using Han can still benefit from this, but you're going to have to take the file. And just like I mentioned in the other previous videos, you're going to have to open up your uh, package game put this file in there repack it and then install it into your ps3 and that way you can see your results which i know it's kind of a process but that's the only way to do it unless han got ftp now i don't keep up at all with han stuff so if it got ftp great i don't think it has if it hasn't then you're going to have to do it the long way all right now that all that's out of the way let's go ahead and get started i've already closed on my ps3 because we're not going to need it anymore for right now I'll put a link in the description in case you're interested in using the paint.net software. You can come here and you can download it right here where I'm showing you. All right, it's the .pdn file. All right, now after you've installed that, that's all you need to do. Now comes the fun part, looking for the box art. Uh, in this case, today, we are going to be looking for Metal Slug Anthology box art. This is the PlayStation 2 version, which I've already installed on my PS3 via uh, package method and when I do searches the best thing to do is of course type the name of the game followed by box art or the word cover I then filter them out by clicking on images here in Chrome so that way only the image files show all right so here we go I opened it with paint.net and you can see it's quite large and it looks really good uh, and we're gonna come back to this here in a little bit for now go into the description you'll see there's a zip file you can unzip it and you'll find two templates that I provided for you here. They're uh, some that I made and I use regularly. Here is the PS3 box one. And then the other one is the full size pick onepng file. Now this PNG file, since it's an image file, obviously you can make it any image you want. It doesn't matter as long as the size is correct, meaning it needs to be 1920 by 1080, as long as you name the file correctly and you put it in the right place, that's it. That's the only guidelines you need to follow. The image could be anything you want. Now here for this one, for this template, the one that I use, I have left a PS2 uh, box art here, uh, in this case of Soul Calibur 3. Now I use that for a couple of reasons, primarily as a placemat, because when I'm going to set it up for a PS2 game, I can just put the image right over this existing image and within the uh, edges of the box, and I'm pretty much good to go. And then we just need to make the reflection and stuff, which we'll do here in a little bit. That way, every time I scroll to a different game, the box will pop up in the same place with whatever art I put. Um, the other reason why I use this one is because I want to be able to see the entire XMB. 
This image is 1920 by 1080, but most of it, as you can see, is 100% transparent. This allows you to fully see the X and B through all these transparent parts. It creates the illusion that there's no image there except just the box art and this little PS2 game icon frame that I made. In reality, these two images are part of a much larger image that covers the entire screen of the PS3. It's just you don't see most of it because it's transparent. All right, so now that after all of that is out of the way, let's go ahead and actually get started. Uh, you're going to find that with paint.net, you have these little four floating boxes in case you ever close one. You can always open them up here in this top right corner by clicking them on or off, whatever. Um, they come in really handy. The only one I really don't use is the history one all that much, but the other three, they get a lot of use. Anyway, let's go back here to this image and I'm going to hit control A and control A will select the whole image. Now I'm going to hit control C, which copies the image and I'm going to paste it into this one as a layer. There's a shortcut for that, but I keep forgetting what it is. So we can just go up here to edit and we can click on paste into new layer. And you see it puts it right there. And all we're going to do is literally paste it over the image that's there. Now this is a PS2 game, so I don't need to mess with the box. Just put the image right over the existing one. Let me get this out of the way. And let's move that there. And basically you're just going to cover the old image like so. Now, once you're happy with the location of the image, just hit Control D. Control D removes the dotted lines uh, of whatever it is you have highlighted. All right, so I like the way it looks. It's looking good. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so now that we've done that, remember this box art is a layer that we added. Now, if you look at your layers box, we have two layers. We have the image that we started off with, and then we have... Uh, the layer that we added. Whenever you uncheck it, you can make one of the layers disappear. So the second layer that we added, if we uncheck it, see, you can't see it anymore. And then you can see the layer underneath it, which is the one we started off with. So let's go ahead and check it back. Now, before you save your image, you do have to flatten it. It can't be in layers uh, before you put it into the PS3. Um, for right now, though, I'm going to merge. I like the way this came out, so I'm just going to go ahead and flatten it. And there's a couple of ways you can do this, but one of the easiest ways, since we only have two layers here, is I'm going to take this box art layer and just squish it down to the one underneath. And for that, I'll press this little button right here that says Merge Layer Now. You can see it's now disappeared. It's merged into the one in the bottom, and now this is one image. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a new background. And it's going to be the same size as this image, which is 1920 by 1080. Okay, I'm going to hit OK. So see, it's made a new one. And I'm going to pick kind of a neutral color, like a tan, a beige, a yellow, an orange, a green will work. Um, so I'm going to pick this color here. I already picked the green. I'm going to click on this little paint bucket. I'm going to move this bar up here to ensure that it paints everything 100%. And now I'll put the paint bucket anywhere, click it, and it makes the whole image green. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control A, then Control C to copy it. And then I'm going to go over here and click Paste into New Layer. Now as you can see, it covered up our workspace here. So what I need to do is put this on the bottom of the image that we're working with. So if you come here to your layers box, you can see the green is the top one. We're going to make sure it's highlighted, which it's highlighted in blue, and we're gonna hit this down arrow and it will move it down. And see, now it's below the image. Now, since that image is transparent, most of it is, we can see right through it and we can see the green layer underneath that we just moved. And the reason why we're doing this is because it'll help us see the reflection we're about to create a little bit better against a colored background. So anyway, let's go ahead now and what we're going to do is we are going to, I'm going to bring this over here. We're going to click on this selection, the rectangle selection here, this little box, right? Click on it. 
and then what we're going to do is we can go about halfway here and it, it doesn't matter if you go past the edges or below it, it doesn't matter because what it's going to copy is just the transparency um, so we highlighted about half of the box now what I'm going to do is to make sure that it doesn't copy the green I'm going to momentarily uncheck the uh, green background I'm going to uncheck it now you can see this area is still highlighted while it's highlighted we're going to hit control C to copy this highlighted area and then we're going to hit paste into new layer now you can see it immediately added another layer and if we grab it and move it you'll see that our little copied area can be moved around and whatnot and it's now a separate layer while it's highlighted we're going to go into layers I'm going to hit flip vertical and there we go now it's flipped upside down so guess what we're going to do now we're going to go ahead and move it down it doesn't matter part of it is going to go below the screen that's not going to be seen and that's fine and then we're pretty much going to make it touch the bottom of the box so that it parallels it perfectly and that you don't see any white or any color seeping through so it's going to just barely touch it like this there we go all right so i'm happy with that and that's pretty much it for now <clears throat> All right, so once you're satisfied there, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on the uh, green background again. And if there was any gap or any space here, you would be able to see the green shining through between uh, the reflection and the bottom of your box. And as you can see, there's no green shining through, so that's good. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, Control D. To remove the dotted lines just to you know make it look a little bit better so I'm liking the way that looks so far now I'm gonna make sure that the layer we just pasted which is the reflection in this case here is called layer 3 I'm gonna make sure layer 3 is highlighted right which it is it's highlighted blue and now I'm gonna go ahead and double click on it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it semi transparent here I usually go down to like about 125 to 130 somewhere right around there all right i'm gonna leave it at like 129 it's usually 125 to 130 and you can already see it's starting to look like a uh, like a reflection right you put out 125 there we go all right and we're gonna hit okay and there we go now it's giving off the illusion that it's kind of like a reflection but to make it more authentic unless it's against a mirror it shouldn't look this crisp normally when it's reflecting there's a little bit of blur to the reflection itself so i'm going to go into effects i'm going to go into um, blurs and then i'm going to go into surface blur and normally i turn this into a two and i turn the bottom one usually into a two or a one it just depends okay and then just hit okay and now it gives a just a slight hint of blurriness to that reflection so that it looks like if it's being uh, you know reflected off of the surface off of the surface and it looks more authentic all right so we're pretty much done with all of this um, but real quick in case you're using paint.net a couple of quick tips if you ever want to mess around with one of the layers whenever it's highlighted it won't affect the other layers so for example let's say I wanted to erase this like ps2 frame thing since that um, that image is this layer here the background uh, layer I can go ahead and just click on the erase tool make sure this is set to 100% you can pick the size of the erasing circle and then once we swipe it like this you can see it erases it but it didn't erase the green part if I was to highlight the green and then swipe it now it erases it but look it won't erase the blue so yeah whenever you do something to the layer that's highlighted it shouldn't affect any of the other layers and remember the PS3 XMB the image or the light from that will shine through any little open transparencies that you make 
So you can actually make some designs or add some cool effects knowing that. All right, so let me hit Control Z. So I can undo all of this. We don't need the green layer anymore, so I'm going to highlight it, and then I'm going to hit X, and it will completely remove it. Now we have the reflective layer here and our main image. I'm going to go ahead and merge them, and you could, uh, you could do it here, or you can just go here, click on Image, and click Flatten, and it will squish down the whole image. Now we'll be able to save it. We're going to hit Save As. I'm going to go into my desktop and let's go to I don't know where oh there we go metal slug anthology I'm gonna put it into that folder and I'm going to name it uh, pick one dot PNG all caps we're gonna click save and I'm going to put this on auto detect right it's 1.4 megabytes that's fine and just click OK and there we go, it saved it. Now it's ready to be transferred into the PS. All right, so I went ahead and started up the PS, and now we are going to FTP the file in, which if you have a fully jailbroken system, of course, uh, you can do that super easy, or just stick it onto uh, a USB stick or whatever and use a file manager of your choice um, to transfer it uh, to your PS where, uh, where it needs to go. Um, again, for those of you who are on Han, obviously, like I explained at the beginning, you'll have to put it into the package file directly. Okay, so I already have FileZilla open and it's connected. We're going to go here to DevHDD0. Now, if you've installed a PS1 game, PS2, or PS3 game via package method, then the game will reside here in this game folder. Uh, it's also the case if you've installed a, a homebrew app, the homebrew apps like Rebug Toolbox and Irisman and Multiman, they all reside in this game folder as well. When you go in here, you'll just have to look for, um, you know, which game or which app or whatever it is. Sometimes you can figure it out by the name, uh, but sometimes you can't. You can just go into it and then drag. If there's a pick one file already in there, drag it out or drag out the icon zero PNG file out to your desktop. Double click on it and based on the image, you'll know which game it is. If you're using this via a file manager, you can also click on the icon zero PNG or pick one PNG file if it's there already. And based on the image, you'll be able to know which app or which game or whatever it is. If you are using a PS3 game, if this is for a PS3 game that you're making this pick one PNG file for, um, and it's the folder type backup game, then just go into that game folder. Now those games, as you know, reside here in the games folder when they're folder type backup games if you have them on your external drive you can stick this file on there as well basically you'll go to wherever you have your folder type game a backup ps3 game go into it and then go into the ps3 underscore game folder and that will always be where your pick one uh, png file will go all right so let's go into the Metal Slug Anthology, which happens to be this one. Hey, there's no pick one file in there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up the folder. Actually, I had it open and I closed it. So let's go ahead. There we go. Let's drag it over. Okay, and now let me open this back up again. And let's go ahead and go into metal slug and there we go so it actually looks really good i like it i love the color i like the reflection yeah it looks pretty good so that's it that's how it's done sorry the video was so long guys don't forget though to thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one good luck with your box art